Let's take a look at the new updates for Haggis Tools 1.15. Let's go for it. Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now, you might notice this horrible menu on the right hand side. <laughs> I caved in, I caved in. Now, this was actually requested by a user, and you know me, I'm a people person, I like to please, I like to please, but actually having this menu, it makes so much more sense than having to go up here all the time. So, for example, I can go to the copy, location, rotation and scale, and I can paste any objects very quickly. Now, you can actually paste in keyframe as well. So, for example, if I paste, I'll paste the location, rotation and scale, and it'll insert a keyframe. I have a nice keyframe button here as well. We have the copy animation as we did the last time. But I've also added a few couple of additional things like the quick rotate. And this works on multiple objects actually. So you can rotate plus 90. Obviously you can do it on the Y or the Z. It's a nice little tool actually. It comes in handy for quickly rotating stuff. Now I've made some pretty significant changes when it comes to select by polygon count. It kind of works properly now. <laughs> but I have two options. So the first one here is SC, so anything with the same polygon count as the object that is selected, for example this, and we hit it, it will select by the same polygon. This is great actually, so let's say for example you want to select loads of screws, so if you know the polygon count you can just go to SC, but I did upgrade the actual menu here, so select by polygon count, and if you've had an object selected or an active object at one point, it will actually tell you active object last selected polygon count was 40. And if you hit the same count, it pretty much replicates what this button does. But the new options here is less than, greater than, and equal to. So these are actually individual options. It's not less than and equal to. So they're actually separate now. And it means it should work a little bit better, to be honest. Now, I've also implemented store and lock selection. So for example, if I hit store and lock, I can work on the scene, I can move things about and at any time what I can do is bring this back, restore lock selection and now these objects are active again. Now originally the way that I had it, it just unlocked everything so this makes it a little bit easier to be honest. I've also added another option called invert selection lock. So let's say I want to actually lock everything else bar the object selected. I can use this little kind of lock here and now I can't select anything apart from the object that was selected. And again, we can restore these very easily, enable selection on everything. Perfect. We have a few selection tools, so this one will select mesh objects, curves, text, stuff like this. Now we also have the store and hide function, but I've covered that stuff before. But it's just nice having this menu here, for example, like I can put the face orientation on. In fact, let's put it on and what I can do is I can flip the normals here in object mode. Nice little tool. Hey, hey. You have duplicate and join. Best tool, best tool in the world. <laughs> create material, that's one of the new tools. So for example, let's delete this material. I can create a material and I'll actually name it the same as the object. Now obviously I've been messing around with this, so it's cube008. So it's a good way not to overwrite stuff as well. So in terms of new tools, I've also implemented a few other ones. Like you can now select a scale larger than one, select a negative scale. Obviously I covered the lock inverted selection, but if we actually go into edit mode, I've started building out the edit mode tools. There is a few, they're not the best tools in the world, but they do help, to be honest. So if we go to Haggist, now originally I was going to make my own menu, but it doesn't warrant it at the moment. So what we can do is we can actually assign a random colour and material to the selected polygons. And this is good for doing ID maps, or, or maybe you just want to assign a material and have it coloured just so you have a better visual representation. So what this does here is it actually randomly assigns a value every time. Now, duplicate and separate is one of my favourite add-ons. I'm not a big fan of the way duplication works in Blender. For, so, for example, you need to press Shift and D and then right-click to drop. Not a huge problem, but we have two options here. So, if we go to Mesh, Haggis Tools, we can duplicate and separate. So, this will duplicate the object and then separate it into its own object. Or we can just do duplicate and drop and that just saves one extra step. And if you add it to quick favourites, <sighs> does it make it quicker? Not really, but duplicate and separate certainly does work and it's pretty cool to be honest. And that is pretty much the updates for Haggis tools. Well, that's kind of a lie to be honest. There's probably more stuff that I forgot to mention. Check out the change log. Now, when it comes to the development cycle of Haggis tools, I'll probably slow it down a little bit and make the release every fortnight, maybe even monthly now. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to have people downloading it every single week. Is pretty much my point. 
and I don't want to kind of spam my YouTube channel with Haggis Tales because it, it doesn't look great to be honest. But anyway, that is the updates for Haggis Tales. Do me a favour, guys. Like the video, buy the product. Cheerio.